Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today for this message about the Maseroth, God's Gospel written in the sky. Today we will be looking at the ninth house of the zodiac, the sign of Taurus the bull. Now, as I explained in a previous uh, message, the Maseroth is divided into three themes or books, each containing four zodiac signs. The first book contained the signs of Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius, and told the story of Christ's birth. It concentrated on who Christ is to his people. We saw him presented as the incarnate Son of God, the great Redeemer, the sufferer, and finally the conqueror over sin and Satan. The second book relates to the fruits of Christ's work and contains the signs of Capricornus, Aquarius, Pisces, and Aries. We saw Christ through the second book as the sacrifice for our sins, the living water, our liberator from the slavery of sin, and the crowned lamb, the ruler of all creation. In this final book, we will see Christ as our judge, the coming prince and savior, our protector and our victor over Satan. This book includes the houses of Taurus the bull, Gemini the twins, Cancer the crab, and Leo the lion. Of course, there are no actual pictures up in the sky, but the ancient names of the stars themselves tell God's story, despite Satan's twisting and paganizing of the original meanings. For a more in-depth explanation of the Maseroth, please return to the introduction of the Maseroth, which aired on this channel on July 8th. This is probably my favorite book of God's Gospel in the Night Sky. It carries a prophetic theme which we all can eagerly look forward to. But before we launch into this week's study, please join me in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. Thank you for painting the sky with your gospel message of salvation. Lord, I uh, pray that you would anoint my words, that you would anoint the listeners, that uh, this message would be for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to start the study today. The reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 13, verse 9. For see, the day of the Lord is coming, the terrible day of his fury and fierce anger. The land will be made desolate and all the sinners destroyed with it. For see, the day of the Lord is coming, the day of his fury and fierce anger. The land will be made desolate, and all the sinners destroyed with it. Isaiah 34, 2 For the Lord is enraged against the nations. His fury is against all their armies. He will completely destroy them, dooming them to slaughter. And finally, Job 39, verses 9-10 through 10. Will the wild ox consent to be tamed? Will it spend the night in your stall? Can you hitch a wild ox to a plow? Will it plow a field for you? We now come to the final book of the Zodiac. The first book of the Zodiac, or Maseroth, focused on the suffering Savior, and it spoke about the coming of Christ, his battle with sin, and his suffering and death. The second book was bracketed by pictures of the lamb or ram and tells the story of the church redeemed by Christ. The church is initially pictured as being chained and desolate and then enthroned and glorious. This final book tells the story of the consummation of all things. We will see the coming of Christ in judgment, the gathering together of his own to eternal salvation, and the fiery destruction of the wicked. Today, we're going to look at the ninth figure of the Maseroth, Taurus the Bull. This constellation has the same meaning in virtually every language in which it is known. It's a picture of a great beast, a bull or ox, with his head lowered and his horns pointing forward. He is untamable and is charging forth on the rampage with his head down. 
bringing destruction to all who are in his, in, in his way. It's a picture of the coming destruction of the wicked as Christ comes in judgment. Now Taurus is the forepart of the bull and appears to be growing right out of Aries the lamb. We have a picture here of the lamb changing into the bull. We see the lamb now giving rise to Christ coming in great glory and judgment. Now the principal star in Taurus is named El Debaran, located in the bull's eye. In Arabic, it means the captain, the leader, or the governor. We see references to unicorns in the scripture, and we know that the unicorn was a fabled one-horned animal. The Hebrew word is reem, which translators wrote as, you guessed it, unicorn. It's been discovered in recent times that what reem really meant was a now extinct wild ox. Though no longer alive in our day, it was around as recently as Caesar's time. In fact, Julius Caesar described it as described it as being hunted in the Herclinian forest in his day. It was a formidable creature, color and form as a true ox, but it was nearly the size of an elephant. Now remnants of this giant ox have been discovered in northern Palestine in recent times. This is not a one-horned animal, as the unicorn is generally pictured, but a very large two-horned ox. It was extremely fierce and dangerous and quite willing to attack men if they ever came within its sight. This was an animal that could not be tamed or domesticated. You know, the description of this wild ox makes me think of Narnia's description of the Christ figure Aslan. He's not a tame lion, but he is a safe lion. Jesus flipping the tables in the temple was certainly not the action of a tame, mild-mannered man either. Well, Taurus is the picture of this wild bull or ox. It's a very fitting picture of Jesus Christ coming in judgment. In Greek mythology, Taurus, the wild bull, was a form assumed by Jupiter for the purpose of carrying his loved one the beautiful Europa across the seas to the islands of Crete. And then after securing his beloved, he became angry at the injustices done toward him, and he wrought great havoc upon his enemies. Now we see here, despite the pagan myth, the picture of Christ taking his bride and delivering her safely to heaven. He then turns and brings judgment upon his enemies whom he has come to destroy. The famous constellation Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, is found riding high upon the shoulder of Taurus. This is a lovely picture of the Church of Christ riding safely upon the great bull Taurus, being carried safely by him to heaven. We also see in Taurus the constellation Orion, a picture of Christ the branch who is the coming prince, who conquers the devourer and is coming to destroy sin. The sun is in the house of Taurus from April 20th through May 20th, and it pictures Jesus' glorious coming as the judge. He will come in judgment like a rampaging bull upon this sinful world. As in all the constellations, Taurus has three deacons or lesser constellations, which give even more details and clarity by the names of the stars within them. One of my favorite constellations, and one of the few that I can easily pick out in the night sky is the constellation of Orion, the glorious one. The name means the brilliant, the swift, or he who comes forth as light. In Hebrew, the name is Chesel, which means a strong one or a hero. He's pictured as a mighty hunter with a club upraised in his right hand and in his left hand the skin of a lion which he has slain. Well, the Bible describes Satan as a lion, which goes about seeking who he may devour. Here we see a picture of the lion's skin, with the head still attached, which Orion is holding in his left hand. The constellation Orion is mentioned three times in Scripture. Oh, excuse me, my nose is itching. It's mentioned three times in Scripture, twice in Job and once in the book of Amos. Now, Orion is pictured with a bright belt or girdle about him in which there is attached a sword. 
At the very top of the sword's handle is a figure of the head of a lamb, as a reminder that the great hunter is also the lamb who is slain. The Arabs called him Al Gawaza, the branch, or Al Mirzam, the ruler, or Al Nagjed, the prince. One of the stars in the constellation of Orion is Betelgeuse, located on his right shoulder. This is an enormous star, 700 million miles in diameter. Our sun is only 865,000 miles in diameter. Betelgeuse means the branch coming. Rigel is the name of the star found in his lifted foot, and it means the foot that crusheth. The three stars in Orion's belt are called the three kings, or Jacob's rod, or the El and Yard, which means giving righteous measurement. In his left breast shines the star Bellatrix, which means swiftly coming or suddenly destroying. The names of these stars paint a clear picture. We see our hero Jesus, the branch, coming, crushing Satan in swift, sudden, righteous judgment. In spite of all the distortion and perversion, the ancient picture given by God in the beginning still shines through, despite all of the distortions of mythology. Now the second deacon of Taurus is Erdanus, the river of the judge. It's pictured as a fiery river that flows out of the foot of Orion goes past Cetus, the sea monster, and disappears into the outer darkness. In Greek mythology, it was a fiery river which threatened to destroy the world. Listen to Daniel 7, verses 9 through 10. I watched as thrones were put in place, and the Ancient One sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire and a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him, many millions stood to attend him, and the books were opened. Psalm 97, one through three reads, The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the farthest coastlands be glad. Dark clouds surrounded him, righteousness and justice are the fountain of his throne. Fire spreads ahead of him and burns up all his foes. And Nahum, chapter 1, verse 6. Who can stand before his fierce anger? Who can survive his burning fury? His rage blazes forth like fire, and the mountains crumble to dust in his presence. And lastly, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is clearly a picture of Christ coming to exercise wrath and anger upon his enemies. The final deacon in the house of Taurus is the constellation Auriga. On the planisphere, it's a picture of a man seated on the Milky Way. He's called the charioteer, but is also called the shepherd. In his right hand, he holds the band that was connected to Pisces, the fishes, but the band is no longer connected. He has a goat or a lamb in his left arm, and in his lap are two newborn baby goats. The she-goat has his front legs around the neck of the shepherd. This is a picture of Christ the shepherd, who shall come and gather together his own. It's a picture of both adults and children gathered together in the arms of our shepherd. The name of the star in the right arm of Auriga is Menkelinion, which the Chal in Chaldaic means the band of the goats or ewes. Now in the zodiac of Dendera, which is one of the most ancient of all zodiacs, there's a slight variation of Auriga. In this rendition, he holds a scepter in his right hand, and the upper part of the scepter is shaped like the head of a lamb. The lower part of the, shepherd, of the scepter is shaped like a cross. This zodiac was formed even before Christ was born, and it is a promise that in the midst of the fiery judgment and outpouring of his wrath on the wicked, 
Christians will be safe in the bosom of the Great Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the House of Taurus, we can clearly see the picture of coming judgment on the wicked and Christ protecting his own. This is very exciting news for us who have made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. He's coming swiftly to judge the wicked and will protect the righteous. It's not such good news for the wicked. One day Christ will return in majesty and power and wrath. I would much rather be wrapped in his arms than not standing before his horns. How about you? Nobody knows the day or the hour that Jesus Christ will return, and it could be any day now. If you've been feeling the nudging of the Holy Spirit to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, I urge you to not delay. Make this decision now. To delay and put off this decision is to, deny, is to deny Christ and his sacrifice for your salvation. If you're ready to become a child of God, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for paying my debt of sin. I know that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are the Son of God, and I want you to be the Lord of my life. Please save me. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the very first time today and you meant it from your heart, please tell someone you have been reborn as a child of God. You can tell me if you'd like. You can email me at CherylPickford at gmail.com. I'd like to help you get started on your new walk of faith. Next week, we're going to look at the 10th house of the Maseroth, Gemini the Twins. I hope you're enjoying this study. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any installments in this series about God's gospel and the stars. And of course, please feel free to share this video on your own social media platforms to help others understand that the night sky is so much more than just twinkling starlight. It is God's message to us, painted across the heavens. May God richly bless you until we meet again.